Uh, when we talk of cognitive biases, cognitive biases are systematic tendencies to deviate from rational calculations. So it's it's partial in it's partial judgments, partial decision making. It's decision making focused more on cognition in terms of we have limited attention or decisions affected by emotions, angry, sad, happy. And so when we talk of these kind of biases, these are tendencies to make suboptimal decisions due to a wide variety of reasons. A couple of things would be a confirmation bias. When we are coming up with a proposal, we try to focus only on the data which supports our recommended strategy. So always looking for evidence which confirms our point of view and ignoring disconfirming evidence. Another example is saliency bias. We tend to focus more on recent events, we tend to focus more on a few events and very conveniently ignore a larger body of evidence as such. I mean another example could be social biases. So if you take the Irish banking crisis as such, everybody started lending to the property developers. So there was a bandwagon effect of sorts. Another example would be escalating commitment to a failing course of action. So for example, investing in a technology or a product line, even though you're seeing it's not working out, but you know you have the senior manager who's emotionally very tied to the project and may believe that withdrawing at this stage would be an acknowledgement of his or her incompetence. Another example of a cognitive bias would be say, when we look at strategy, I mean for the most part we were told a good strategy is a strategy that is focused and is simple. Well, yes, but not, not always. You know, if you want to develop a strategy in emerging markets, it has to focus on experimentation, taking small steps and so forth. This is I would say one of the most uh, dangerous kinds of biases and it's basically the, the fundamental thing about a success paradox is when we have been successful we assume it has been because of you know our good performance our good understanding of markets and so forth and so what we tend to do is we tend to repeat the same actions which have made us successful in the past and these may not necessarily be good courses of actions in the current situation because they might have been an environmental change which has occurred i think the first and foremost would be what my Senior colleague Pat Gibbon says, always question assumptions, challenge assumptions, challenge assumptions of your prior success, challenge assumptions about the market, challenge assumptions about the environment, challenge assumptions on what consumers want. Do not take things for granted. That would be the first and foremost thing to do. I think the second thing to do would be to somewhat recognize that we suffer from biases very frequently. And if we are aware of the types of biases that are occurring within our organizations, we can take some steps to overcome those biases. So a recognition that they exist. And I would say the third issue, and I would say probably a really important issue, and it's, it's argued by a couple of uh, senior academics in the McKinsey Quarterly, a very, very nice argument. What they basically find is that when we talk about good decisions which have occurred in the past, we generally think of good decisions as decisions that are made by people who are competent and based on good information, which is generally true. So yes, good people and good information is necessary. But there is a third element to it also, and that third element is a good process, the process by which decisions are made. So questioning the process in terms of did we get alternative viewpoints? Did we try to look at different scenarios? Did we have somebody play the devil's advocate? Are we just using one single example or analogy in order to make conclusions which are invalid? So look at the decision processes. I think the first thing an organization can do is make sure that there are divergent opinions which are available and discussed early enough. The second thing I would argue is that we tend to focus always on execution, but sometimes it's necessary just to step back and develop a certain level of strategic thinking. Speak about things which could go wrong. And if they went wrong, what might happen? How might this affect an organization? It's talking about scenarios. It's talking about what if. 
what if our competitor introduced this product? What if the tariffs were raised? What if our supplier did not continue with us in our partnership? Keep challenging assumptions as such. The third thing an organization should probably do is have two different types of meetings. Uh, one type of meeting is a decision meeting, you know, where people are brainstorming and speaking about various scenarios or various things that could happen. And the other meeting is the implementation meeting, you know. Keep it a bit different. Yes, execution must be a part of planning, but one should not get so obsessed in the micro details that one misses the big picture. So there are several things organizations can do in order to reduce biases in their decision making.